Hi, my name is Dr. Rob DeBeese, and I wanted to welcome you here today to another one of Dr. Rob's whiteboard session. Now, the topic for today is, is your swimming pool causing your thyroid problem? Or is your swimming pool maybe aggravating your thyroid problem? Most of us, you know, during the summertime, we're hitting the pools, we're lounging out, we're getting tan, but in the majority of our pools, we use a chemical called chlorine as a method to help sanitize the water, right, to prevent bacterial overgrowth. However, chlorine is very, very similar to another important trace mineral that your body needs, particularly your thyroid. You see, your thyroid gland is shaped like a bow tie, looks just like this guy down here, and it sits right below the Adam's apple in a guy, same location in a woman. And the thyroid gland absorbs iodine. The cells of the thyroid gland, they absorb iodine, and they take that iodine and they combine it with protein and they make your thyroid hormone. In order for the iodine to get into the thyroid cell, it has to cross through a receptor. This over here is an example of a cell that might be in the thyroid, and these on the surface of the cells are receptors. Now what is supposed to happen is this iodine over here in purple has to travel through the body, make it to the blood, get over here, and it has to plug into this receptor, very much like how you put a key into a lock and as a result it opens the door. So this iodine has to get into that receptor and when it does, the cell absorbs it. Again, it combines it with protein and it makes your thyroid hormone. The problem, again, is chlorine looks a lot like iodine. They're, they're really similar. Almost like, did you ever take a key and you put it in a lock and it fit, but when you went to turn the lock it didn't open and you realize, oh yeah, wrong key, right? Similar phenomena happens here. The chlorine can plug into these iodine receptors because the chlorine looks so similar to the iodine. And when the chlorine plugs into the iodine receptor, now we got a problem, right? Now we got a problem. No two objects can occupy the same space. So this iodine is not gonna be able to get into that receptor. As a result, if this iodine can't get into that receptor, this cell is not gonna be able to produce adequate amounts of thyroid hormone. So I wanna make it perfectly clear that I do not claim to treat thyroid disease. That's not what we do in our clinic at all. But what we do is we support the body. And there's many ways to test What's stressing the thyroid gland? Sometimes it's fluorine, like from fluoride toothpaste. Sometimes it's chlorine. Sometimes it's bromine, which is a, a metal that was put in our bakery goods back in the 70s, right? Brominated flour, if you've ever seen that on the back of a label. Um, and there's many other things that could influence and affect the thyroid in the way it works. The thing you want to do, of course, is you want to get yourself in the hands of a good doctor that knows how to handle those things and can test for this. Because there's many patients, I feel, who are probably on Synthroid, and they might not need it. Again, I'm not claiming to treat thyroid disease, but if there's a deficiency in iodine, meaning if the iodine can't get into the cell because it's being blocked by chlorine or some of these other chemicals, well, then that person's gonna have a problem making their thyroid hormone. And that person, they might end up on Synthroid, Armor, Thyroxin, Cytomel, who knows, some type of synthetic sometimes or natural version of thyroid hormone. When in truth, maybe the only thing they really need is to be able to remove these chemicals from the thyroid gland. So that way the cells of the thyroid can start absorbing iodine again and making thyroid hormone. So I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave you a little bit of clue to understand what might be behind some of the thyroid problems. Now, this does not mean you cannot go in your swimming pool. Enjoy your pool. There's just things that you need to know if you have this problem when you're going swimming so you take the proper precautions. So in any event, I hope you enjoyed this. I can't wait to see you guys back at another one of Dr. Rob's whiteboard sessions, which will be coming up soon. Um, if you liked the video today, please subscribe. That's why I do these videos. My purpose is to help and reach people. So please go down here, just take a second. If you've not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and share with a friend. If there's someone you know that you think could benefit from this information, please share it. And I hope to see you at the next session. Thank you very much.